Hello everyone, I am Shubham Garg and welcome back to the lecture series of Tanner. So in this video we are going to see how to design an XNOR gate. Alright, so here I am going to create a new cell. Okay, so I am going to name it XNOR and I need to uh, press OK. Alright, so now I am going to add the logic, uh, the NMOS and PMOS. Alright, so here I am going to go to devices this 250nm devices and from here I am going to select the NMOS and I am going to place uh, instance ok so one instance here other here alright one thing uh, that I am assuming since you are uh, watching the standard playlist that is uh, you know the basic logic circuits and how these circuits are made if you want to gain knowledge on how these logic circuits are made and how these work I would suggest to go to the DSCH playlist first. In that I have explained the working of the basic logic gates. Alright. So here I am not going to show the logic diagram or truth table or anything. I am just going to make the circuit and simulate it using Tanner. Alright. So I am going to put some more instances. Okay. That is 1, 2, 3 and 4. These are 4 and MOS. Alright. So I will just move it a bit downwards. So remember to move uh, the command is Alt plus M. Alright. So now I am going to connect it to using a wire. Okay, make sure to press escape after the wire. Alright, so now these will be connected like this. And now like this. So these are, this is how the NMOSes are going to be connected. Now next thing is we need to add PMOS. Alright. So here is the PMOS. This is PMOS1. PMOS 2 alright and this is third PMOS and this is fourth PMOS so these will be connected like this as well the same way we have connected the NMOS alright so we are going to connect it like this So here it will be connected like this and from here we are going to get the output. Alright. So this is our circuit of uh, XNOR gate. Now uh, one thing if you have known the XNOR gate you know that the input uh, these are not the direct inputs. These were uh, on one terminal we need to add the A input and on the second PMOS we will be having A bar. Similarly, on first PMOS we are going to have B and on second we are going to have B bar and same way uh, with the NMOS. Alright, so first I am going to connect this PMOS and NMOS for those with uh, that are having A as the input. Alright, so this is for A and this one will be for B. Okay. Similarly, this is for A bar. Okay, uh, let's do one thing. We will add an inverter after connecting uh, with A. Alright, so I am going to connect. Uh, I have connected the B. So I am going to connect the inputs and the output ports. So this is the first input port. It is A. And this is the second input port. That is B. Alright, so we are going to extend the wire a bit so that we can add the inverter afterwards all right so here you can see uh, we have added the input ports and here we can add the output port so this is our output port i will name it as out all right so now what i need to do is i need to add an inverter all right so to add an inverter what you can do is you can either select the inverter from the libraries that you have developed. 
like you can copy this inverter all right all what you can do is you can add the inverter from this generic 250 nm logic gates so i am going to add the inverter from here so i am going to select instance okay so there is our instance oops yeah this one should be our instance so right click an instance okay i don't know why it is uh, selecting this yeah so let me just open the library first so there is our x not all right and this is uh, this library so here is the inverter so i am going to select instance and yeah it is right here all right so i am going to place an inverter here and i am going to place another inverter here all right so now what i am going to do is i am going to attach this pmos and nmos to one inverter and the other pmos and nmos to the another inverter all right so here is our wire so first of all i am going to connect these two okay and this is the output of the inverter so now here i am going to select the wire okay so i will connect it here similarly i am going to connect this with the other input okay i know the diagram is a bit messy but you you will be able to understand how the x not gate works all right so uh, these are the inverters we have connected it and now what we need to do is we need to uh, have a plots okay so first of all i am going to add the voltage that is for printing voltage so here it is one instance will be after the inverter one instance will be before adding the inverter similarly here one before the inverter and one is after the inverter and one will be on the output all right now one more thing what we have to do is we had to add the sources so first of all we are going to add the ground for that we need to go to miscellaneous and we will be creating an instance okay so this is the ground instance and here in the sources we need to add vd okay uh, vdc sorry yeah this is the one and we will be selecting instance so i have just rotated it okay so here other sources we will be adding the bit that is at the inputs so here one v bit will be here at the a input that will be at the b input now we need to connect the ground as well so here is our first ground okay here is our second ground and there is our third ground all right so this is how your xnor gate will look like okay so let us simulate the xnor gate and see if it is working fine or not all right so first of all i am going to save it and now i am going to run the simulation okay so now uh, remember you need to add the library files first of all okay so uh, here this is the generic 250 nm library file and make sure to add space tt after that all right so we will be doing the transient analysis stop time will be let's say 400 nanoseconds and the time step will be 40 m all right so i am going to press okay and uh, let us see if it is working or not
So it seems there is no errors and our simulation have succeeded. Okay, let us see the waveform. So here we are getting this waveform. Okay, uh, one waveform we are getting from ground. Okay, we are not getting any voltage. That is, we are not getting the A source. Let's see, we have that means we have made some mistake in the circuit. Okay, so let me just zoom in here. Okay, uh, let's just move it and now we will see why we were not getting the waveform. Everything seems right. Uh, okay. Uh, Let, let us just run it again. Okay, so I will close that simulation. Otherwise, we will look for some misconnection. So let me just run it again first. Okay, it is still not getting a proper waveform. Let me check. Okay, the bit pattern is correct. Okay, uh, okay here are two print voltages. Yeah, one we have. So basically we have uh, defined different print voltages and all of them are not printing. Okay, uh, first of all this should be here. Okay, that's why you can see there was some, yeah, and let's move it here as well. Some wire was moving with it as well. Okay, so let's just run it again. Let's see if it works this time. Okay, now I can see more plots. So basically I am not able to see two plots. I am uh, seeing three of them but two are not visible. Okay, uh, there must be some cross connection or something. That's why those plots are not visible. Let me just delete these. Okay, then let's see um, what will happen to our circuit. So let me just run it again. So basically there is some issue uh, with the circuit.
ओके सो आई एम एबल टू फाइंड द इश्यू एक्चुअली आई कनेक्टेड द ग्राउंड हेयर इन दिस इनपुट टर्मिनल दैट्स वाई इट इज प्रिंटिंग द ग्राउंड सो आई नीड टू कनेक्ट द ग्राउंड हेयर ओके या सो बेसिकली आई नीड टू कनेक्ट द ग्राउंड हेयर इन द सोर्स टर्मिनल एंड सिमिलरली हेयर इन दिस ऑल्सो आई नीड टू कनेक्ट दिस वोल्टेज हेयर आई एम सो सॉरी फॉर दैट okay because the voltage should be at the drain terminals so i will just delete this wire and this wire as well so i am going to connect it here all right so here is uh, our voltage source yeah so i guess now our work, uh, our circuit should work fine let's just run the circuit and check if it is working fine or not so first of all we are going to set a, set up the spy simulation and here we will mention the stop time 100n and the step time as 10n all right so i am going to click okay i am going to save the design and let's just run so i will be starting the simulation so here we can see it has compiled without any errors and here we can see the waveform we can see when the inputs are different the output is zero all right when the inputs are same the output is one okay so there is some leakage current and that's why the waveform is distorted a bit otherwise you can see the result okay in fact that's why due to this leakage current and all these spikes and distortion uh, transmission gates are preferred rather than the cmos logic all right we will cover the transmission gates in detail uh, in some of the later videos so this is how the xor gate is working and you can create an xor gate by adding an inverter after the uh, in the output all right so this is all for this video see you guys in the next video